Howdy everybody on YouTube land. Remember that scoreboard um, video I did where someone vandalized it? Well, what we're doing is we are going to rebuild it and we're going to make version 2.0. So we're going to make a series of videos on how that works. So right now I'm just sitting here watching the UXW Bill show again and talking to uh, uh, Weasel2HTM in the background. But anyway, uh, so what we have is they don't want to use the laptop anymore. They'd rather use a handheld controller. So we got one. This is the original controller to the Everbright series. Went ahead and stripped it. We got a 5x5 five five key matrix, a display window, and notice the buttons around are blank. That's because a piece of paper slides up inside here that gives you your layout. So that's a good thing. I can print that out. Here's the original board. And that was what was originally in there. That's just like a clock display. And then there's the driver. Um, so, first I thought about using this guy, which is a 2x8 uh, dot matrix text LCD with backlight. The problem is, it doesn't quite fit within the confines of that window. So I found something that has a better fit. That chip right there. That chip is basically that one. And that chip came out of a... Um, SGI 2400 tower uh, before we scrapped it out I took that so I've been reading through the data sheet just trying to figure out a way to drive it and it, it, it's not hard there's the timing diagram the electrical characteristics um, and most importantly it's a pinout it's a parallel drive and then there's how you can cascade them together and then there's the ASCII bitmap pattern um, and uh, the digits and all that stuff. So what I did was I wrote a piece of test code in here that sets up my port pins and basically I've got a, a, a sample here that says right display, set time, press enter to continue. Do a loop. It just loops through that forever and there's my subroutine that does the right byte and I'm using an, uh, an overlay variable here because it's easier instead of trying to do conversions from string to bytes I just do an overlay. It does it on its own. So, then there's the array and it does the chip enable, write enable. So, anyway, the next the next thing is I have to figure out the key matrix and get the code written for that. And then after that, it's one big ass state machine that I gotta write. And that is not gonna be fun. Because you gotta think, with the state machine, I've got, I press one button and it branches off into a whole nother set of functions that respond to buttons. And I hit another function and that branches off from there and that tree's off from there and that tree's off from there. You see where it goes and down the line. You know, so without further ado, we'll go ahead and power our circuit. Set time and press. Enter to continue. I think that should work nicely. That should work nicely. I think. So uh, that's all for this video, folks. I'll see you next time.